Hello and welcome back. Uh, looking forward to this video. It's the first time I've done an actual border video for a long, long time. And um, so we're armed with, we've got a brew just in case, because it might be a long video. And uh, hopefully we've got everything set up. I'm going to talk about a particular common fault on the new Ecotech 2 boiler. Now it has got some generic faults that have passed on from the old boiler to the new one. But this one has got its own problematic uh, component that is causing major problems with the, the, the boilers. Thousands and thousands and thousands of these gas valves have been changed and, um, and that's the problem by the way. Uh, and there's so, but this is basically more from a consumer perspective, so, uh, and, and, and a plumber's engineers or whatever, um, to give you an idea of what to look for and how to be absolutely sure you know what the problem is. Now, before we go any further, just in case you're not aware of what boiler you've actually got, whether it's an Ecotech 1 or an Ecotech 2, this is an Ecotech 2, uh, Ecotech 824 Plus. Now, when they revised the boiler, they also changed the case design. You've got this big silver bar across here with the word valent on it. That's a good indication that it's a new Ecotech 2. But if you drop the panel down, you will see that all the user controls have been taken away. So it's a pretty much a flat surface. All you will have on an Ecotech 2 is an on-off push button here on the panel. And you'll have a very small liquid display, uh, LCD display on the left hand side. This is a blanking plate I've put in there just to make it look pretty until I get a proper clock for it. Um, you may have even a built in clock or programmer snapped in or, or push, pushed into the front of the fascia here um, for, for, your, for your time control for your heating. But generally speaking, if you the easiest way to tell the difference really is on the old Ecotech models, you had two dials here where you could turn the temperature up and down for the hot water and the heating you also had a pressure gauge down here on the right hand corner where you could actually physically see, very easy to use, a physical gauge with a needle showing you the pressure or the level of water in the boiler. If you haven't got those knobs and you haven't got the pressure gauge on your display, you have got one of these, which is an Ecotech 2, which is what we're here to talk about. Now, it has a very common fault, does this boiler. And that fault is the gas valve. Now the gas valves are very, very, very unreliable component. When you compare them to the existing or the old Ecotech 1 gas valves, which were virtually bomb proof. Now, this is how sad it was. I was thinking about making this video last night and I spent the whole of my evening trying to work out or remember when was the last time I changed a gas valve on an Ecotech 1. And I have to say it was a long time ago. And I can only remember ever changing one where the valve was actually faulty. Um, a lot of gas valves get changed, um, not necessarily because it's the gas valve that's faulty, um, because other things get overlooked and people just make the assumption and go for the gas valve straight away. And then they realise that actually uh, it wasn't the gas valve that was wrong. Um, so the old valves were well built, solid, reliable, Fantastic longevity, never go wrong. Brilliant. The complete opposite can be said for this gas valve. Now, thousands of these have been changed, thousands, we know, because we've, we've done them. We've, we've been out changing them. Now, the new gas valve is a completely dis different design to the old one. It's incredibly over-engineered. It's got lambda sensors or air, uh, mass airflow um, controls on it now, similar to what they use on Formula One engines. This is a boiler in someone's house, so I'm not quite sure. Anyway, the idea is, is to try and get that extra 0.0000000001% out of your combustion process, which is a lot of engineering for a very little gain. But anyway, that's what we've got. Now, I'm not going to get into too much technical detail about the valve, the stepper motors and the mass airflow sensor, etc, etc. I'll save that for the Patreon Smart Monkey site. So if you really want to know the ins and outs of gas valves, how they work and these new gas valves and how to deal with them, you'd have to go to the Smart Monkey page and have a look on there. But this is for consumer mainly information. So what's going to happen when your gas valve goes wrong? Well, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You are going to get 
three fault codes come up on the boiler. Those fault codes are F28, F29, F54. That's five, four, F54. That's the one you need to remember. Now, if you're a consumer and you're watching this and you've had fault codes or these fault codes, it would be prudent of you to make a note of those fault codes that come up on the display. It's not critically important, but it is very, very helpful. That's because F28 and F29 are two separate fault codes. They in themselves are quite accurate and will point you towards certain things that could be wrong with the boiler. There's also a very subtle difference between the two, which can make a, com a, a massive amount of difference as to how you go about rectifying those faults, because one's one thing and one's another. Although they're very close together, the subtle difference between the two can send you in a completely different direction to the other one. So the giveaway with this particular fault is the F54. That's the magic number. That's the one you're looking for. If you've just got F28 and F29, it's quite possible there could be a different set of faults or a different problem with the boiler. It won't necessarily be the gas valve. However, if you've had a combination of F28, F29, F54, so that F54 is very important. If you've had a combination of all three fault codes, you can be 99.9% .9 assured that you're gonna to have to replace the gas valve. Pretty straightforward. So anyway, even if, but if you haven't been prudent or you haven't got any idea what fault codes have been coming up on the boiler, the good news is, is that all valent boilers going right back to the 2000, the early Turbomaxes, have a fault code memory, which is easily accessible or accessed via the LCD uh, display. Now, it's about the only thing that is easy to access on that display, really. Yeah, really. Um, so you can easily access the fault history, the last 10 fault codes. So if you can't remember or you haven't been taking note, whoever comes out to fix the boiler should be able to easily scroll through into that access and see what fault codes you've had. And then they can determine whether you've got an F54 in there with the F28 and F29s, in which case it's very, very easy to diagnose. Now then, if you've had one of these gas valves changed already, don't be surprised if you have to change another one later on or in the future, because as far as I'm aware, I could be wrong. So I don't, don't shoot the messenger, but I can only go by the knowledge that I've got at the moment. As far as I'm aware, there's no modification for this gas valve. So it's the same gas valve that's gonna go back in as the one that comes out. So the likelihood is, is it's quite possible, I'm not saying it would, but don't be surprised if you end up having to replace the second one as well as the first one. Yeah, so there you go. Um, it is a very, very, very common problem with this boiler. Now, as far as cost is concerned, I looked it up today just to make sure that the video is up to date. Now, the prices range from somewhere between £97 to £98 plus VAT, so you're probably looking at about 120 quid, up to £127 for a different, a slightly bigger gas valve, um, plus VAT, so that's going to be, what, uh, 45 quid. So that's going to be around about 160, 170 quid. So it's not a particularly cheap part, but you have to have it. You can't do anything with that valve. You have to replace it. So you're going to get a bill, I would say, I would make an allowance of £200 for the part, just in case, and hopefully it will work out cheaper. And obviously the cost of whoever it is comes out to actually do the repair. One other little tip, very important, not so much for the consumer, but for the anyone that's going to be doing the work. These boilers, or the old boilers, Ecotech 1, had one gas valve fitted all the range, easy. So you only had to carry maybe one or two gas valves on the vehicle. Now, I know that 99.9% .9 of people in this industry do not carry any stock or very little stock. We do the complete opposite. Whatever boiler we go out to, we have the whole boiler, every nut and bolt on the vehicle. So that way we repair every time when we have on one visit. We don't have to go back with spare parts. It's fixed on that visit. Well, 99.9% .9 of the time it is. 
But if you haven't got a stock of parts on your van or vehicle, you are going to have to, um, how can I put it, go and get one and come back. Now, this is where you, the data badge on the underside of the boiler is critically important. You must get the right boiler model, and that's the whole number, the 376-R1, whatever it is. The reason being is because unlike the previous models of boiler, these new Ecotec 2s have different gas valves for different sized boilers. Now, I can't remember the exact amount. I think it's three or four different gas valves. And you have to get the right one for the right boiler. Otherwise, you could end up in serious trouble. Um, so, yeah, make sure you get the right valve for the right boiler and you should be fine. Now again, um, on the Patreon site, on Smart Monkey, I'll actually go through the process of showing you how to change the gas valve, how to take it out, put a new one in, set it up, da, 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 da. but obviously I can't put it on YouTube because it's a public platform. So, more technical information available on Smart Monkey, how-to video on Smart Monkey, but for consumers and uh, owners of boilers, don't, be, uh, don't get too stressed about this. It's a reasonably straightforward fix. It's a very, very common fault. It's not just you and your boiler that's gone wrong. There are thousands of them doing it, and they're still doing it eight years later because as far as I'm aware, like I said, I could be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, that component has not been modified to solve the problem. So new gas valve should take probably, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes to replace. Get the boiler set up. Da -da 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 -da. Shouldn't take too long. And hopefully if you call a company out like us, we carry everything with us, so when we come to you, we'll go, oh, yeah, you need one of them, we'll fix it, just like that, on the site, finished, bye-bye, see you in a couple of years. However, if you don't, and you call a different company in, they're likely to come out, try and diagnose fault, then they'll have to go away, come back, buy the part, come back, and then do it. So, But either way, it should be a reasonably straightforward fix. So, I hope that's been useful. Um, can't think of anything else I need to say, really, without getting in too much, um, you know, getting too deep and a bit crazy and flying off on a scientific tangent. So I'll leave it there. Ecotec 2, common fault, gas valve, this little bit of kit here, with all these wires and sensors, etc. This is the bit you need to change. Don't forget, F28, F29, F54. That's the giveaway. If you've got an F54 in there, 99.9% assured, Get a new gas valve and you should be fine.